Hi guys, Chris here, and we're back at Keekly Track with the Skipton AC crew doing our 10k tune up. We've got some 200 meter sprints and some 600 meter sprints to do today. Um, running in the streak flies to begin with, but I've also brought along my brand new pair of dragonflies. So I thought I wanted to give the two pairs a test. So I've got on my uh, stride pod to measure power. I've got on my armband for heart rate. And we're going to do the uh, do the first four two hundreds and one of the six hundreds, and then switch shoes. And uh, and afterwards, I can look at all the stats on Strava and Garmin and see if there was any difference. See if I went any faster. See if that heart rate was lower. See what the power production was like. Both got Zoom X foam in them, so both should be giving a nice cushioned ride around the track. I think the Streak Fly, a little bit heavier, but has more of that Zoom X, so we'll definitely have the edge on comfort, but of course the track spike lighter and got the spikes for a bit more grip, a bit more pull and push on the track. Okay, let's get the rest of this warm up done, and see how we do. So here I am running down the home straight of Keithley Track. I'm not going as fast as I do in the 200m reps because I'm holding the selfie stick and the GoPro, but I'm still going a reasonable pace and you can see this nice midfoot strike underneath my knee and that Zoomex foam on the streak fly compressing and then giving me some rebound with each step. I really like getting footage like this where you can look at your form from the side, especially in slow motion. Um, it's great to see how things are going, what's going well and what you'd like to improve on. So if you can get a friend to take some slow-mo footage of you from the side, I'd really recommend it. And most smartphones can do slow-mo footage now, so it's not too hard to do. If we look at this footage here, I'm happy with my foot strike. What I do feel is that I'd like the float phase just to last a little bit longer. So the float phase is the part of your running gait where your knee is driving forward and both feet are off the ground and you are floating. And when I run, I like to think about trying to transition between my left and my right float phase as quickly as possible and then hold that pose with the knee pushed out in front, floating for as long as possible. Uh, and here I feel like it just needs to last a little bit longer. It's just pulling up a bit short. So that's definitely something I'm gonna be thinking about when I head back to the track next week. Okay, that's the first 600 and all the 400s done in the street fly. Let's have a go in the dragonfly. Here we are again, coming down the final straight of Keithley Track. Again, not going at 200 meter rep speed, but going at a fair old pace. And I think actually looking at this in comparison to the street fly footage, a little bit faster. It looks like I've got a slightly longer stride as I'm going down. You can see that I'm getting a much more of a forefoot strike here, which is what you'd expect wearing track spikes. And I'm still getting the foot strike underneath the bent knee, which is good. There's less compression, I feel, on the shoe, which is again what you'd expect because there's simply less Zoomex foam on these shoes. But certainly when I was running in them, I did feel like I was getting a nice cushion drive and a lot of bounce from them. Again, looking at the stride in this footage, you can see that I'm getting that nice foot strike. I'm happy with that. What I would again like to work on is holding that float phase just a little bit longer. So I always try to think to myself, float the knee, float the knee. So I'm just trying to transition as quickly as possible between floating the left knee and then floating the right knee. And the longer you can hold that pose, the longer you can hold your knee in front of you, the more your opposite glute is going to engage and the further you're going to go with each stride. So that's really something that I'm going to be working on as I move forward, thinking about how I can just hold that pose a little bit longer and get a bit more distance out of my stride. Another track session finished. 
4 times 200, 2 times 600, 4 times 200. Managed to get the uh, last set of 200 really quite fast for me. Um, and that was in the dragonflies. So yeah, they felt really good running in them. As always, when you put track shoes on, they're really tight. You feel like they're a size smaller than the shoes you're used to wearing. Um, but I think some people don't wear socks in their shoes. Maybe I'm making a mistake wearing socks with me. <laughs> wearing socks with the track shoes. So maybe I'll give that a try uh, later on. But uh, yeah, felt really good, felt fast. So I'll have to have a look at what the stats say when we get in. Okay, here we are in Garmin Connect and we can get geeky with the stats. So here's my run. You can see I forgot to turn off the Garmin when I left. So we've got a bit of me driving, but we'll ignore that. And we've got quite a lot of stats here. Run cadence. We've got power from the stride pod. Uh, I think the stride pod does cadence as well. We've also got ground contact time, vertical oscillation, which is how much we moved up and down with each uh, step. And we've got form power that I'm going to be looking at. Uh, I've also downloaded this, so we've got a nice table to look at, um, which shows each of the 200 meter sprints. So the yellow ones are where I was wearing the streak fly. This green one is the 600 meters in the streak fly. And then the blue is the 600 in the dragonfly and the orange are the 200 meters in the dragonfly. And you can tell that just looking at this, I did speed up through the session. I tried to keep the pace around the same uh, and, and keep it the same effort, but invariably I've sped up a bit. So we've got a 34.8, 34, 33, 32 for the first set of 200s. Funnily enough, the two 600s were exactly the same, 143.2, so I'm quite happy with that. And then the last set of 200s in the Dragonfly. Again, I felt like I was trying to go the same speed, but they have all come out quicker. Um, the last one, I have to admit, I did just go for it because I wanted to see how fast I could run. And I think that's probably my best 200 meters in quite some time. It's not world breaking, not world record breaking, of course, but uh, it's not too bad for me. So I filled in some of this table, the red bits I filled in myself because I didn't get that data. So I've approximated it from the Garmin information. But let's go back to that Garmin page because I want to look particularly at vertical oscillation and form power, maybe have a look at ground contact time. So first of all, with the vertical oscillation and here I'm just going to overlay pace so we can see when the efforts were and change it to measure it by distance so it makes it a bit larger. So for the first set of 200s, my vertical oscillation was about 7.75, coming over 8.13, 7.8, 7.75, uh, uh, which isn't bad at all. And then in the 600s, uh, it looks like for the first set, first 600 in the streak fly, I was doing about 8, 7.5, uh, 7.75, sorry. Um, so that's not too bad. In the Dragonflies, when I switch to that, uh, I you can see the, the 600 here, this section, I was doing around 7.75, 7.5, going down to about 7.3, so lower than in the streak fly. And then the 200 meters I ran in the dragonfly was substantially lower. You can see actually this line here that represents 7.5 going across. All of the 200 meters in the streak fly were above that and all of the 200 meters in the dragonfly were below. So we're looking at about 6.75, 6.8, 6.13, 6.25, and this last one where I really went for it, 6.5. Now, this is measured by the stride pod, so I don't really know how it comes up with this number, if I'm honest. But what I like to at least assume is that it's internally consistent. So even if perhaps I'm not really doing 7.75 vertical oscillation, it's actually out by... 30 centimeters, uh, 30, 30 centimeters would be uh, quite a lot, but uh, 0.3 of a centimeter, that at least it's internally consistent. So when it shows that it's gone down, um, I am reducing that vertical oscillation. So that's an interesting first point that my vertical oscillation appears to have been lower in the dragonfly than in the streak fly. 
Let's have a look now at form power. Form power is the measure of how much of your power is going into keeping your form. So it's not actually propelling you forward, it's just everything else keeping your pose right. So ideally we want less form power because then more of our power that we're creating is going into propelling us forward. So it's going to be a more efficient stride. Um, and again, I've, what I've done is put it over distance to make these uh, intervals a bit longer for us. And then I've added in the pace as an overlay so we can see when I was going fast. You can see my form power in the streak fly, uh, 62, 63, 63. On the 600, it was about 63. So running, running around 62, 63. And again, if we look at the dragonfly, it is lower only by a couple of watts as read by the streak fly. But the 600s, I was doing 60, 61 as compared to 62, 63. And the 200s, again, are where there's a bigger difference. So here we've got 58, 59, 59 and then down to 57 so actually when i ran harder my form power went down so i'm quite happy with that because it means when i'm getting into that faster running gait that i'm actually running more efficiently um, so that's really useful to me and again a, a difference of five watts 57 up to 62 is pretty significant i weigh about 57 kilos so that's nearly 0.1 of a watt per kilo if you're a cyclist, you're always thinking of watts per kilo, but it's useful for runners as well. The more power you produce per kilogram, the faster you're going to go. Uh, and the less power you're wasting uh, on your form, the more power that's going into propelling you forwards rather than just keeping your form right, the better. So 0.1 difference over a 5K would be pretty significant in my view. So I'm, again, I'm happy with that. That's an interesting thing to look at in the differences. Finally, let's just look at ground contact time. Um, so again, I'm going to put it over distance and put the pace on and we can see my ground contact time in the streak fly 158, 158, 158, 152, dropping a bit there. Um, it, it typically lower ground contact time is better and more efficient on the 600s hovering around 158. Weirdly, in the dragonfly, my ground contact time was actually higher. So you'd expect that in a a track spike with less foam and landing on the forefoot that you'd have a lower ground contact time but you can see here as compared to the 600 in the streak fly I'm a couple of milliseconds higher 174 and then for each of the 200s 166 170 170 164 that compares to being down in the 150s so that's a slightly surprising result for me because everything else was telling us that actually the ground contact time would be lower that I was had less form power that my vertical oscillation was less but actually it's it's turned out that the uh, ground contact time was very slightly higher I'm not sure how significant it was all right let's go to that table and just have a look at some other things that come out of this so I've added in the ground contact time and the vertical and the form power here and what I've done with we've got a lap power for each of these um, as I say, I did try to keep it consistent as I was running, but it's hard to do when you're doing 200s. You can see this last one, I definitely put in more effort, 359 as compared to the rest. Uh, this first 200 at 312 was quite low, although comparable to this one uh, at 319. And what's interesting to look at, for me at least, is if I subtract the form power uh, from the lap power, the average lap power, we're going to get the power I was producing to push me forwards. And even just that small difference there when I was doing 312, my form power took that down to 250, whereas here 319 minus the 58 takes me to 261. So it's a difference of 11 watts. And you can see that did make a big difference in the time, 38, 34.8 uh, down to 31.3. Um, now here uh, I've got 335 as my average over the uh, over the 200 meters and another 335 here. So we can actually directly compare these two. Uh, in the streak fly, I was doing about 335 average watts over the distance and my time was 33.4. On both of these, I was doing 30, uh, 335 watts and I was quicker, 32.2 and 31.6. So it looks like I was faster in the dragonfly for the same power input, which is obviously a big thing to look out for. Um, some other things that I was just in, in looking at this picking up on, um, I did my longest stride length in the dragonfly, but I also did 
my quickest cadence in the dragonfly and i did notice that my cadence my average cadence in the dragonfly is just generally a little higher than it was in the streak fly certainly you can see 184 over the 600 in the streak fly 186 in the dragonfly uh, and certainly on this one where i really went for it i had a, a stride length of just over two meters uh, and a cadence of 194 so i was going for it then but it definitely felt easy to pick up the pace and to get that higher cadence in the streak fly which of course is a lighter shoe sorry in the dragonfly which is a, a lighter shoe than the streak fly um, as I say, my heart rate data, you can see, was just all over the place. Uh, my max heart rate was definitely higher than 127 when I was running that 600, um, and it didn't recover this much by the time I got onto that second set of 200. So I think we're just going to have to completely ignore that and hide those columns. Um, cadence, though, we've already looked at. Um, max cadence, my max cadence was always higher in the Dragonfly and again I think that's just because I could pick up the pace, go that little bit faster. So I think I do need to go back to the track and have another play with the streak flies versus the Dragonflies but my initial impressions are that perhaps as you would expect the Dragonfly just runs a lot better for the uh, 200 meter sprints. Well I say a lot better, it's not a huge difference but it did feel like I was putting in the same effort but I was up to two seconds faster in fact on this obviously on this last one I was way faster but if we look at the first four 200s I did 34s coming just down into the 32s here but with a much bigger power I was quicker than that so I put in 282 watt average um, once you subtract my form power um, and in fact, maybe we just look at the lap power. I was doing 344 there. I put in 10 watts less on these two uh, and I was quicker. Yeah, 335 compared to 344. Uh, and I was 31.6 on this particular lap as opposed to 32.5. So I was almost an entire second quicker. So that's pretty substantial to me. Uh, and I'll definitely, definitely be picking the Dragonfly to do some more of my track sessions. And eventually, once we've finished this track uh, training that we're doing. We've got another eight weeks, nine weeks after this. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do a track 5k and I will definitely be using that Dragonfly to do that track 5k, hopefully with a few skipped and AC paces. So I hope that's been interesting. It's a bit geeky looking at all the stats um, and I'll see you next time on the track.